So, as the title suggests, I had a thought. So I was just watching stuff on the internet, watching old pictures on the internet, and I've noticed that every like uh, ten years, every decade, every few decades, or every maybe century, or sometimes even maybe few, after a few centuries, there is one thing, one piece of technology that everyone admires, everyone sees, and everyone looks as the future, as something which is the top of the technology of its time, and it's like a, it shows what can be possible in the future. For example, in the just from the 16th century up to like the <coughs> 19th century, the top of the technology were ships. Where those were huge, magnificent creations. They could travel great distances, and this is and this weighs like a few hundred tons, and this is few hundred tons of wood, which can travel f f over the periods of even months or years, this great distances. I mean, nowadays it's not really that great of an achievement, but 300 years ago, especially that people were also much smaller, like a typical person was this size, because this was so long time ago. Okay, and obviously they have great influence, like some countries exist only because of the ships, like United States, and obviously the colonization, all of that stuff. And then after the era of ships, was the era of giant trains. Those were also big, giant construction. They were much bigger than one, what we see typically on the railroads today. And though this is also a great achievement of its time, because this is hundreds of even thousands of tons of metal which can go with a speed of hundreds of kilometers per hour in this period where people usually uses, used horses and, ob and obviously the influence of that, those machines were really big the whole continents were co connected with the ra railroads and basically the whole continents got smaller and after the age of the giant steam locomotive so it was in the 19th century and to the beginning of the 20th century people started creating huge airships and those things were really big I mean, this is... we cannot see the perspective here, the real scale but this is the size of the... up to the size of the small village not even the building, but the small village this is really huge construction and it could sail through the air over to other continents over very long distances this was a really big achievement of its time, so the early 20th century. And here you can see the comparison. Those are the biggest airplanes we have now, the biggest ones. One of them sadly was destroyed in the war in Ukraine uh, just recently, the Anton of Miriam, the biggest one. But still, those in the biggest place of what we have nowadays are not even the sixth of what the giant airships were. I mean, can you see those small black dots? Those are humans. And this is the machine. And it, it, it was flying through the air. Obviously, there were drawbacks. Obviously, there was the giant catastrophe of the Hindenburg. And also, one of the countries did a few bad things. And most in that country had the biggest technology in this area and obviously the biggest ships have giant swastikas and the, a detail but yeah that's why we don't use those but still there is nothing like that to this day they were so huge and after that we got the jet age the okay those things are not that big I mean okay until, uh, Airbus A380 is still a size of the biggest skyscrapers, but it's not that big as the uh, airships of the early 20th century, but it is fast. It can travel with speeds of up to 1000 km per hour. This is unimaginable for a typical person, 1000 km per hour. And Concorde, 
which is even small, which is smaller, but could travel even faster than 2,000 kilometers per hour. Those were extreme speeds, and still are. We are still in the jet age, and those things make the whole planet much smaller place. I mean, I don't have to spend months to get to the United States; it's just several hours. And to this day, there is nothing like a Concorde. We cannot, there is no supersonic jet plane. Even though the Concorde was made in the 1969, 1970. However, what I'm going to with all of that, we are just coming into new era. And there is a project which, which is going to cost about the same as the Concorde of Airbus A380. And it's going to have about the same ticket price as the Concorde. And it's going to be the first ever space ship. Not just a space rocket, it's, it's a space ship. It's meant to go to the outer space and back fully and be fully reusable. It's called Starship. It's developed in Texas. And it's meant to travel passengers through the outer space with the speeds of up to 25,000 km per hour. This is just insane. This is going to make traveling from here to Australia in like an hour or two hours. And it's, it, it, this is real photo. It exists. It's just being test, it, it is being tested and it's still in the process of development. And it's actually designed to even go beyond just going from one point of the Earth to the other. It's designed to go even further, even to the Moon or Mars. And it exists. And my final thing, the thing I'm going to say eventually, is if this is just right around the corner, my question to you, which you're going to keep in mind and think about, is what's going to be next?